Hello guys, welcome to the stream. Um, sorry on the wait, I was uh, sorting out some internet gremlins. I hope it uh, is okay now though. Um, welcome to this live stream. Um, to this evening we're gonna be looking at rear wheel drive rally cars. We're gonna find uh, new things out, give you some tips and tricks um, on how to get the best at rear drive cars and most importantly how to drive like Ari Vatanen because <laughs> let's face it he was the best Mark II driver wasn't he hello Jensen hello Niall Doonan Niall asks is this about sending it or just putting the rod through the block <laughs> sending it mate it's all about sending it I'll just wait for a few more people to join. Hello, Oshin. Hello, Jared. Um, Hello, IRE, <laughs> IRPRI, <laughs> hello Contactual, step one, put a block on the throttle, step two, step out of the car, watch it do hoops, right, so, let's, Hello Shaky Dale, good to see you here. Let's um hop into the scene. And we're gonna go into Dirtfish. And we are gonna go with the Mark II Escort. Let's pick a different livery. Oh, with this mad one. Okie dokie. Ford Sierra. Okay, we'll use the Ford Sierra in a bit. Let's start off with the Mark II Escort and I will go middle of the road. We'll go medium tires. So what we're going to start off with is throttle control. Um, probably the biggest thing that you need to know um, with rear wheel drive cars is throttle control. So if we go in and just have a little bit of a play about. Um, so I have put my degrees of rotation up to 540 for this uh, video because rear wheel drive cars you want more rotation to work with for counter steering. Hello Donny Fair, good to see you here. He says first time I drove a Mark II, ask her in the forest, I put in the ditch first corner. This was in real life too, or did I go wrong? <laughs> well, hopefully you learn and find out why you ended up in a ditch. Sweet Jody, good to see you here, bro. Glad you got all your stuff sorted out. Okay. So. Let's just go for a little drive, and then we'll talk a bit about... car now. So this is a Mark II Escort. Um, it's a BDA historic car. Uh, can't remember off the top of my head how much horsepower it is. I think it's 200. 210 rings a bell. Um, and yeah, obviously all the power is going to the rear wheels and rear wheel drive car. It's sort of self-explanatory. Um, and what you need to do 
is modulate the throttle quite a lot so you don't spin out. Um, you want to try and find the traction. So let's talk a bit about throttle control. We will head over here onto the gravel. And if we just pull up here, take a little look. See, we build up the revs, letting out the clutch, and we go. You see, it's the rear wheels that. Let's see if we can. There, there, look. See, it's the rear wheels that are pushing the car forward, um, and the ones that are struggling for grip. So, with throttle control, um, the main thing is to find your method of modulating the throttle. I like to use. It's got many different words to describe. I you know you could call it punching method, but it's it's like in and out like that. Um, some of other people call it telegraph, but I like to call it like a just like a blip or a punch. Um, and that's how I modulate rear-wheel drive cars. Is is that? Because it's short bursts of the throttle that's you know causing the rear wheels to spin. Um, but also it stops you from sliding out. Another method is obviously just being a bit more gradual with the throttle, which I probably do do as well. Um, it's going to be faster overall if you do that. But uh, yeah, we'll look at the two different methods. First of all, if you're taking off from the start line, depending on how much traction you got, you get, you're getting, you'll need to do different modulation of the throttle. So if we build up the revs, Probably want to keep it at about what, about 7,000, just over it, and then we let the handbrake and clutch go. So we're actually getting quite a lot of traction in a straight line. So we didn't have to modulate the throttle too much. Um, but the big area where you have to modulate the throttle is obviously around corners. If we go like that, the rear comes around, we have to counter steer um, in the direction we want to go, which is obviously up there, we want to kind of steer to the left whenever we're going around a right hand corner. You see, I'm just punching the throttle and we've already quite easily got into a slide that we can maintain just by putting the throttle in and out and counter steering a little bit. What we're doing is using a range within the wheel. You can see I'm not actually turning the wheel that much. This is 540 degrees, so we've got quite a bit to work with. But I'm using the throttle to steer the car, to rotate the rear, and then I'm using the uh, the steering to point the car in the direction I want it to go. And we can just sit here and do this, you know, for as long as we want. It's quite quite easy once you get um, to grips with it. I don't even have to use the clutch. I don't have to use the brake. I'm just pumping the throttle in and out and counter steering so as you see it's um it's something that's obviously going to be harder to do with uh a controller but when you've got a throttle um you can do it quite easy and i'm never going 100 percent with the throttle let's say i'm going probably 50 70 percent here I uh, messed it up there a little bit. Let's get back into the slide. We're keeping the same angle all the time with the, the way the car is rotating. It's much harder to, to do it from chase cam, but... And if the car starts to get a grip at the rear and start pushing out, you do a big blip of the throttle um, to get the car to rotate. It causes sudden uh, loss of traction at the rear. So we come, we're, we're getting the car to rotate now. We say, look, 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 the car's going straight. We give it a quick bump like that there, and the rear comes around again. You don't have to use the clutch. You could use the clutch in this instance, but um, you can also use the throttle. So the car straightens up, or it's not rotating, not rain, rotating. We go, and the rear comes around again. 
So that's just a little bit about power sliding, I guess. Um, obviously, it's easy to go around in a, a circle um, like that. But uh, yeah, that's a nice little trick that you can do is just if the car starts to get grip from throttle input at the rear, is as you give it a bigger blip and then it'll cause a, a loss of traction. It already depends too on your um, differential setup, but um, we're just looking at the basics so far. But yeah, you got understeer, the car's not starting to slide from the rear. And what we're gonna do is just go big blips like that in and out. But don't keep the throttle on for too long. Uh, I don't have a hitch pattern shifter, um, Jody, but I'm thinking about getting one. I just don't know where I would install it. Because I've got both of these. Um, but I will think about it. Yeah, it's it's basically blipping the throttle, but um, it's just little inputs. So whenever I'm Whenever I'm balancing the car, I'm just doing that. That's all it is. You see, I'm not going, you know, I'm not going 100% in. I'm going about 50%. There's 100. I'm going to there. That's all you really need. Um, but you have to feel what the car is doing as well. Um, you know, if you're going down a stage, the car is going to start to try and snap, and that's when you need to come off the throttle. Um, and judge the, the amount of input you need to put on the, the throttle then. The Senna technique. We'll call it the Senna blip. So yeah, it is, it's balancing the weight of the car and the throttle, yeah, 100%. So we're coming into this corner, we just go you see, we're actually getting loads of traction there. If you got traction like that, then obviously you don't need to use it because I just went on the throttle again. If we come down here. Uh, just, it just brings the car around, but we we don't need to do that for that corner. Um, we can be much smoother with the throttle inputs. If we come down here, we turn in, get the car to rotate as we get back on the throttle again. Just for argument's sake, let's go to a hard tire because it'll amplify everything even more um, of what we're trying to explain. You can put it on the left hand side. Yeah, I could put the shifter over here. Yeah. So now we've got a hard tire, it's going to amplify everything even more. And look, we're struggling for traction more now. So let's just come back onto the gravel again and see how much difference having less traction. Obviously you're going to get a lot of tire wear on the back tires of the rear wheel drive car, so um, this is good practice. You know, if you want to learn how to drive once the tires get worn, I recommend going for a harder tire. So we're going to launch in again, we're going for 7,000 revs. And look, we're getting more tire. Uh, our wheel spin, um, so we're modulating the throttle. So how do we approach this corner? You can do it two, one or two ways. You can be nice and clean like this. And then we're... That was a smooth input um, of the throttle. I, I'd almost say for faster corners you want to have a smooth modulation. For slower corners I would say you want to go more with the uh, punch like that. But if it's um, a fast corner uh, you want to go just more modulated like that and uh, gradual with the throttle. So we come down here again. So we got a bit of... So yeah, we had a bit of understeer. We locked up the front wheels coming into the corner. That's because the rear had grip on the braking. And then we had to pump the throttle to get around. We come to this hairpin. Just a quick... Just a quick, decisive pump of the throttle and then modulate it once the car did start rotating. So we come in, pump it, and then start pump our one big push and then start pumping the throttle to modulate it. So again, big push and then we got the car to rotate, we come off the throttle and then we start modulating it. 
again. You want to turn the car at the same time. We went too much that time, so that was too much steering input. Um, but as you do the big input with the throttle, you want to uh, turn the steering as well. So there we go, and then we counter steer. So you're turning into the corner when you do the big pump of the throttle. And as soon as the car starts to rotate, you're counter steering with smaller uh, pumps of the throttle to modulate it. Now this is really for you know hairpins or slower corners that we're talking about. So back up again, big pump, and then off the throttle, counter steer, and smaller pumps. Can you do this tutorial with the BMW M1? <laughs> sure can, Seb. Um, we'll maybe use it for tarmac um, in a bit. So let's throw in a Scandinavian flick or a pendulum turn as well. I'm sure you'll be familiar with either one of those um, terms. But essentially, we don't really need to use the throttle or the handbrake for a rear wheel drive car unless we're getting a lot of understeer going into the corner. Um, we should be able to weight transfer. Our the car enough to get rotation. So let's uh, let's show off a Scandinavian flick, which can help us transfer that weight on the tighter corner. So we come up on the entry, we go the opposite way, and then we turn in. We see we straightened up too much. We counter steered too much, and we straightened up. Um, so that was not a perfect one. That was a mini one I just done there. It was didn't look like much, but it was a little one. So we come up to the corner. We want to brake, turn the opposite way, off the brakes, on the throttle again. And we're using that uh, weight transfer that we're generating from turning that way and then that way to rotate the car. So this is something that we don't really do that much. Um, with four wheel drive or R2s anymore, but you can still do it with three wheel drive cars. It's quite popular um, with Group B too. And we're just pumping the throttle to get the traction. Okay, so that, guys, that's really, you know, throttle management to a T. You need to focus on what the car is doing, feel the weight of the car through the force feedback, let the force feedback know that you, uh, you know, it. It'll self um, align and counter steer for you, so just let it tell you that. So we come in here, see if we can get a nice slide around here, faster one. And then we can go way, way more with a, a gradual input with the faster corners. Just like that, and we, we're full throttle now. So faster corners, we can go gradually to full throttle, and we start to get traction, but we're holding the slide. So that was um, a scan even flick that didn't go well. So let's try one down here. We're coming down through the dip, breaking down the gears. We go the opposite way, and then we turn in. And we just feeling the grip and uh, you know modulating that with the throttle. So next thing we will concentrate on is braking. Um, one of the things you need to consider with braking with a rear wheel drive car is that whenever you're down ch changing, you're getting engine braking to the rear wheels only, which means you can lock up the rear um, under braking while you're down shifting. But we'll talk about that in a little second. So let's just show you how you're going to brake. So you're just going to come down in to this right hander and we're going to stay out left, we're going to brake just nice and gradually. We can give a little blip of the throttle, which is one way you can prevent the rear from spinning out. Um, but a way that we can amplify that and reduce the uh, the engine brake into the rear wheels is by heel towing like this. Um, that was not a good example. I find it quite hard to um, keep the brake pressure on whenever I am heel and toe on. That was a nicer one. 
Also, it helps keep the revs up on the car. So there we can hold throttle pretty much flat out. So we're coming down and we're braking. And that way we're not losing any traction through the rear uh, axle whenever we're downshifting. Let's say we come down we brake too much. And we lock up. What are we going to do? The car snaps in, you come off the brakes, you get traction and it turns in too quickly. Because um, the, the weight of the car, especially we will drive under braking with uh, depending on the the differential lock under brake um, you can lose a lot of traction very quickly under braking hello no name garage good to see you here bro yeah we're still on hard tires at the moment but really braking should be the same for most classes I've, I've explained the main difference for rear wheel drive cars is the engine braking is going to the rear wheels so you just need to be wary of that that's where you're going to get the lock ups um, and also when a rear wheel drive car isn't going sideways it wants to go straight because you're getting all the mechanical grip from the rear axle and when it's not losing traction, the car wants to go straight because the rear wheels are pushing the car forward. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind that you always really want to get a, a rear wheel drive car to be slightly oversteering. Because um, understeer is not really efficient at all in a rear wheel drive car. Because um, the understeer is like so bad once you get it. Come down here, you see, the car is actually, once we're getting deeper in the breaking point, the car is trying to do that, it almost feels like it's trying to go over, over on itself and spin around, um, I think that is because the differential, um, so if we're going to talk a little bit about setup, let's go and look, so you see we've got the same ramp angle on the driving and the braking so the difference between them isn't huge um, preload is quite low so we don't really worry about that so let's just see the difference on the braking whenever we do have the rear axle opened up so both wheels can turn more independent of each other glad that you're learning plenty so far Donnie, um, when are you doing the next E-Rally series? Yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna set up a rally tomorrow. Um, it'll just be a more casual, uh, sort of not even a championship. It'll just be a casual event every so often. But um, I'm definitely gonna set up one. These people have asked me a couple of times if we're gonna continue doing them. So let's uh, let's set up just more casual ones that we can do all the time, sort of as a community. Yeah, the Sierra is very frantic with the turbo. Um, you know, a turbo rear wheel drive car is so difficult. So let's go down and see what difference opening up the rear differential has under braking. So look, look, the car did not try to snap. Before the car snapped, it was gonna go backwards if I, if I allowed it. But there we just braked, the car was never trying to do that where it's trying to almost you know it's nose diving and the rears getting really high and trying to pass you um so we just pretty much eliminated snap oversteer um under braking by opening up the differential each wheel can turn more independently so look look how stable the car is now and then we've got a pretty uh steep ramp angle on the throttle which allows us to still have plenty of uh, wheel spin on throttle. But that's just way, way more manageable now. I'm not getting too much oversteer on the entry to corners. So I choose when I want the car to go sideways, not the car's choosing. Oh, fuck, there's a bit of a hole in there. Um, so yeah, that's that's how easy, guys, if you're, you're struggling with something, 
we were struggling with snap oversteer under braking and we just simply opened up the rear differential. Yeah, there is there is another um, club that I run, but I haven't opened it up yet. I'll set up an event this week. Explain how differential works on rear drive cars. Okay. So, I'm no expert on differentials, but I have a pretty good understanding of how you can change them to make them work better. So, essentially, differential sits in the center of the car um, on the rear axle. So the rear axle got differential, and the power comes down the prop shaft um, into the differential, and then it's the differential's job to split that power to each wheel. So if you have a more open differential, um, each wheel can turn in more independently. So if this wheel starts spinning, then the outside wheel will get less um, power, which means you'll get less oversteer. But if you t if you have a, a you know a steeper ramp angle, you have a tighter differential under braking or throttle. Um, it means that they turn less independently, so they're turning at the same time. So if you get wheel spin on the inside wheel, you're going to get wheel spin on the outside wheel, um, which causes obviously loads of oversteer. Um, if you open that up, the inside wheel starts spinning. The outside one doesn't spin. So you're losing grip on the inside, but you're keeping it on the on the outside. Um, you know that's it's it's as basic as that, guys. And what we changed there was basically as we brake, um, when we come off the throttle, we've allowed the differential to be more open. So each wheel is turning more independently. It means we're not getting as much traction loss under braking. And we'll just show you again, right? So here we come down, we're braking. The car's not trying to snap there at all. Look how controllable that was. Let's go in and show you now with the way the differential was. So we're gonna put it right back up to being locked, the same as the driving one under braking. So we're just going to go to the same corner again. You're going to see the absolute difference. The car is going to try and spin around on the braking. So you see it's already, you know, it's already slightly done it there. Sorry, I made a bit of a Austin Powers of that one. Um, so let's go down here again and just show the difference. Whenever you've got traction under braking, it's pushing the car on as well. See, we're you can see that it's it's actually not causing traction loss from the rear. It's actually getting too much grip and making the car go straight. Hopefully, that makes sense to you guys. That if the rear differential is getting grip, it's going to push you forward. If it's not got grip, it's going to go sideways. Um, but essentially what we eliminated was the fact that we couldn't slow the car down into this corner enough. So opening up the differential allowed us to have more control on the braking. See that, and it is sliding. I didn't turn into the corner. If I turn into the corner, then it will, it will rotate. Yeah, Dirty Rally is the uh, the club. If you guys want to join it, so let's just uh, show that one more time. So we just come down. We're gonna break nice and firm. You can just see that the car's wanting to go straight. Um, so we're actually getting too much grip under uh, braking. 
we're not getting a good enough difference in the wheels turning independently. So whenever we open it up, that's when we get good difference. It means the car can actually rotate more because each wheel can turn more independent. Let's uh, just show one more time with... Um, sorry, but for the off-roading. So we come down and you'll just see that the car is going to not want to keep going straight. Instead it's going to want to brake this time, it's going to want to go around the corner. It's not a huge, it's not very noticeable on on camera, but you can really tell when you're driving. So we talked about braking, we talked about scan even flick, um, so that covers weight transfer as well. We talked about throttle control, um, but essentially, yeah, weight transfer is very important in rear wheel drive. You are always flow in the car from one side to another like that so you always need to keep the car in somewhat of a, a balanced um, zone and once you fall off that that's when you're gonna spin out so we're going one way and then when you come off the throttle the car will rotate um, so if you're going one direction let, let me get out of here <laughs> You just see I'm um, pumping the throttle. We go in one direction, then we want to go this way. We come off the throttle, the car immediately weight transfers because we've come off um, off the throttle. We put a bit more grip onto the front wheels and it rotates. Once it starts to rotate, you want to go back on the throttle again. In which case would you close the diffs then in tarmac? Um, yeah, so you're going to want a, a tighter differential on tarmac for sure than you would on, gra on gravel. 100%. Turn on the subtitles on the stream. I'm not sure how to do that. I will, I will check out how to do that after this one. So what, uh, let me try and think, what else we need to cover? Let's talk a little bit about tight tight handbrake turns, because that's another tricky thing with um, rear wheel drive cars. And also handbrake usage, we don't want to use too much of it with a uh, rear wheel drive car, but if we're trying to do a very tight handbrake turn, we want to use a little bit of handbrake, because sometimes we don't have the space to uh, do a Scandinavian flick. So we come down here, you're gonna want to just give it a quick pull of handbrake, use the clutch like that, and then drop the clutch because that gives us a little bit of wheel spin. Um, especially because this is not a turbocharged car, the revs can drop very low, um, so we want to get a little bit of wheel spin coming out. And how we do that is just a bit of a, a clutch kick, really. Um, also, you can stall a rear wheel drive car. By using the handbrake so sometimes you have to um, be very ready to use the clutch to prevent the engine from stalling but if we come down again you'll just see we're coming in second gear we'll downshift we want to give a quick pull the handbrake clutch and then once we're pretty much halfway around the 180 degree um, turn that we're doing in a hairpin uh, that's when you want to let the clutch out again I'll just show you what happens if you don't do that it's more to control the car too, so we come in, handbrake. It's not, I mean, it's, that actually worked okay, sorry. <laughs> if we come in and we don't, we come with too much speed and don't use the, uh, yeah, we're gonna go boof. Overshoot, go backwards, we don't want that. That's what happens if you don't use the clutch. But we come in, appropriate speed. Handbrake, 
use the clutch. Stops the car from over rotating as well. So what we're controlling is uh, the power of the car to the rear wheels. That was that was a really good example. You can see that I was controlling what the differential was doing. I was allowing it to be completely disengaged when I use the clutch, um, and uh, it stops the car from doing anything too crazy whilst you're sliding around the hairpin. So yeah, that's um, that's the the main points. Um, Another thing, let me just take a quick look at the shot. First car was rear wheel drive, loved it in the snow. <laughs> rear wheel drive on snow roads would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, you're totally right, um, Contentual. Um, Something that I was trying to get added into the game was a, a hardcore clutch mode um, where the car would stall if you weren't, uh, you know, you'd have to use the, the clutch if you completely spun out. You'd have to use the clutch to stop the car from stalling unless you went to neutral. Um, but yeah, we just didn't, uh, didn't get around to adding that in, unfortunately, but something that I will keep pushing for. But yeah, you're totally right. If you use the heat pattern with clutch, um, it gives a better representation of how you need to use the clutch on a rear wheel drive car. But it's still applicable for this here because you want to control the car whilst it's sliding at low speeds. So you, by putting in the clutch, we actually changed the pivot point of the car as well because the rear wheels weren't uh, they weren't making the car rotate too quickly whenever we use the clutch so we come in handbrake when we put in the clutch look the car when we put in the clutch the car immediately stops its uh, projected rotation you can see that um, and it's just a nice way to control the amount of uh, rotation that you're going to get Oh, <laughs> that was a bit messy. Yeah, that would be very cool. Is is correct? I'll keep pushing for that. Hello, Blue Snow WRC. Thank you very much for tuning in, and thank you for your kind donation as well. Really appreciate it, bro. Hope you're having a nice lunch break wherever you are. So yeah, hopefully you have learned something so far. I think there's some really good good tips in there. Some nice stuff to uh, take away. I'm trying to think of anything else. We need to talk a little bit about rear wheel drive cars over, you know, say Finland or places where you're getting lots of air, the car is getting light. You don't want to be on the throttle because if you jump and then land and you're on the throttle, when you take off, what happens? So you're at, say, say you're at 7,000 revs when you take off from the jump. Once you're in the air, the car goes on the limiter. What has happened is the wheel revolutions have, have started spinning. You know, the wheels have started spinning much faster when you took off. Um, and as a result, whenever you land, you're going to get a sudden tr uh, loss of traction of the back wheels which we don't want because that can make it very difficult to control the car on landing. You know, the car could land, you've got lots of wheel spin, the car wants to spin then. Um, also, it's not really applicable. It is a little bit in game, but it's more applicable for real life. Or Yeah, for real life. Um, you don't want to do that because you're very quickly you're going to break something, you're going to break a prop shaft, you're going to break differential so it's a bit of mechanical sympathy you can certainly get away with it in a game a bit more but it's actually a good tip for uh, being um, cleaner as well when you come off a jump so 
We come over the jump. We hold it. It's not. It's hard to show it here. Sorry about hitting the car. <laughs> it's actually hard to show it in this jump because it's quite flat when you land. So essentially, you want to go, and then once you're coming to the ground, go back and throttle. Another way you can do that is putting the clutch in just as you take off. So let's just show one method of preventing the car from uh, losing losing grip and losing control after a jump or a bump. You want to come up off the throttle, you land, and you can go back to throttle. But this is difficult to show here because we gotta we have to be on the brake so we don't crash. We go this way. Just off take off, we go off and then land, we go straight back on the throttle. And I'll show you the clutch technique. And you go in here. So clutch technique is it means you can keep the throttle on if you want to keep the revs up. But you stop uh, so we're going and then we clutches we're taking off and then out again. I did go a little bit too early there though. There we go, up to the jump. As soon as we're taking off, I clutch and then out again. I always find that a very um, hard concept to get around though. I don't like I don't like that because I like to keep my foot over the brake um, with my left foot whenever I'm going over a jump just in case the car does go out of control a bit, or not out of control, but you know, it takes you by surprise how the car reacts after jump. I like keeping my foot over the left, uh, over the, my left foot over the brake, um, just in case I need to quickly um, balance the car again. But it's just uh, it's one option. But I think the best way is just to come up, and then when you're going to take off, come off the throttle and then back on as you land. We'll be able to show this in the stage a bit better though. So we'll go to a stage now. I think maybe we'll take a little look at Tarmac. Hello Jared. I am very well. I hope you are too. <laughs> That was great mechanical sympathy, wasn't it, uh, Contactual? It just shows you how uh, you have a slightly different mindset with a, a video game than you would in real life. <clears throat> oh, we'll just go on the time trial. We will go to Germany. We'll go for a short stage. this one and then we need to show the hey Sasquatch I'm good how are you bro sorry I just replied to you there now tips and tricks of BMW Pro car it's no slash it's Monte Carlo <laughs> hello Simon bro good to see you here thanks for tuning in hope you're keeping well back in uh, good old Fermanagh so, let's give this a go, and then, for absolute shits and giggles, we'll take a look at Monte Carlo with a rear-wheel drive without winter tires. But yeah, <clears throat> Monte Carlo is very difficult with um, a rear-wheel drive car because you've got the changeable grip conditions. It's difficult with a four-wheel drive car, never mind a uh, rear-wheel drive. So we'll just go with softs. Um, let's see what we're dealing with here. <clears throat> Tarmac with a rear wheel drive car, we can be a bit more like a racing driver. Go. You think about a lot of race cars, or rear wheel drive, One. you know, go. any of your GT. Um, lift of a crest. Let me just turn off Phil. So I can talk. And you know, any of your modern Race cars are all rear wheel drive, granted, yeah, they have traction control or whatever, but traction control has to be your foot in this case. 
You, you built in traction control on your foot. So we're just in the BMW M1 Pro Car. And really, yeah, you just want to be gentle with the throttle, feel what the car's doing. There, we just seen over the jump I come off the throttle. It's under braking. Nice and straight, turn into the corner. We're getting loads of traction, so we don't have to be as tentative with the throttle. You need, still need a little bit, especially once you start to get a bit of tire wear. There's a big open hairpin. We're getting loads of grip, so we don't really have to worry about um Thank you very much, uh, Albie, for the donation. Thank you. It's very kind. So yeah, going back to the... Uh, what we're currently facing is, you know, we're getting loads of traction on tarmac, and that's the ideal... <laughs> oh, sorry. You didn't see that. You didn't see that. That didn't happen. But yeah, having loads of grip in a rear-wheel drive car on tarmac is ideal, and that's what we want. But we're always going to get those situations where the car, you know, wants to rotate. And you just have to feel what the car is doing and gauge your throttle input. Um, if the car starts to slide, you want to come off the throttle a bit and then start to apply it gently again. Um, you know, whether front-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, you can keep more throttle input whenever you do go sideways. Come in here, quick. You see, it grips so much, that's the tricky thing. There. Just get a nice rotation. Here again, we turn in. We got a bit of a slide through there, we just maintained it with the throttle. Here, we want to keep off the the throttle until we pass the bump on that corner. You just have to try and read the road and expect what the car is going to do. Here the car is going to get light over this crest, so to be tentative with the throttle. And if you touch the grass, that's going to send the car really sideways once you go on the throttle. So you really want to stay on the track as much as possible with rear wheel drive. We got a nice little slide there as well, but we're getting loads of grip. You know, we got a slick tire on tarmac. We can just have little slides and it's not causing us any bother. But yeah, I guess if you do really want to learn throttle control with rear wheel drive, go to Monte Carlo. Look at that, we caught it. So, the south line torque, we could feel the slip. Satellite torque started to go. We allowed it to go. We went very quickly, and we came off throttle a little bit there too, and it was no issue. We really tarmac with rear wheel drive should be no issue at all. Glad to hear that, Simon. Good stuff. So let's just take a look at the replay. Never seen uh, me driving so slow on a track before. Let's see if we can pick out any points of interest. So you see, we come down here, we're just breaking straight, and then we turn in. We're just turning in. Get on the throttle. Look, we got a bit of a, a rotation. Just play it at full speed. So we turn in, turn in off throttle. Now throttle. We get a bit of rotation, but we're getting loads of traction. We don't need to worry about uh, throttle modulation as much. If you have the rear stepping out on the corners, you're probably coming in with too much corner speed, Sasquatch. Or, yeah, you're coming in and being on the throttle too early again. You want to come off the throttle and wait until you can see the exit of the corner, especially in rear-wheel drive. Um, obviously, you want to maintain some throttle, but not all of it. And look at um, what happened there. So, what did we do wrong here? 
so we turned in. This is going uphill. We're getting a lot of camber change too. We're getting rotation. And we just went on the throttle and the car went boom. We didn't have much time to save that at all, to be honest. So that just needed more patience, a bit less entry speed. A bit less entry speed and being slower on the throttle. there what happened there why did we why did we straighten out here what happened well one of the things is there's a bump in the corner um sorry it's not gonna be the best way to show it you can see there's a bump in the corner just there there look and let's put the rear wheel off the ground just as we're counter steering um and when the wheel comes back we're catching grip with the extra wheel spin and it brings the front around so you have to you have to turn back in from counter steering very quickly things like that you can't really predict you're just on settling the car and the wheels off the ground when this inside rear wheel comes back down that's when it catches grip you can even see the tire mark being left yeah and then it's catching grip Putting us back out. Um, and then around here, we're just getting loads of grip. And a bit of a slide at the end, but nothing to worry about. Yeah, I love my all-wheel drive as well. Sasquatch all-wheel drive is uh, definitely... Well, I'd say it's where I get my most enjoyment out of is all-wheel drive. Um, Rear-wheel drive can be very enjoyable once you get the, the hang of it. What have I done with that? So... I'm just gonna show... how driving on grass affects it. You see the car just went sideways while it's driving over the grass. Why do I speed this up? Ah, oh, there we go. And then we had... There's a bump on the inside of this corner, which... No, it didn't cause it. So... It was a bit of a bump, actually. It did cause the start of the oversteer. Say so it's just one nice little slide, but... In this car especially, just because it's so low to the ground and a rigid chassis, you don't have a big window to play with the, the oversteer in this. It's going to catch grip again very quickly. But yeah, I mean, it's all about patience, I think, on Tarmac. Hello, OB Rallying. I'm good, bro. Hope you are too. Thanks for tuning in. So, we've covered, covered pretty much everything we need to. Let's um, hop into Monte Carlo. How can you counter bumpy road to set up? I always lose control of Stratus on the fast six and five in Spain. Good question. Um, you can soften the suspension, which allow more body roll. Um, but the thing is, body roll can cause traction loss by shifting too much weight as well. So you want to find a happy point where you're allowing enough body roll to stop putting too much um, load onto the tire and causing tire slip. But you also don't want too much body roll that's causing weight transfer, which also causes tire slip, so it's finding a nice balance. Hello, Don Evans. It's been a while since you joined the stream chat. I think all the boys have been missing you. It's been been a long minute, a hot minute. 
Right, so descent. Now we want to go up. We want to. We want to go up because that's uh, descent is more difficult because obviously you got gravity pushing you down. So we'll go for something a bit easy. Let's go Sierra, <clears throat> and we're gonna. Can we select soft tire? I think we can. Glad you're enjoying the content, Alphax. We're just loading into um, We're just loading into Monte Carlo now. Glad you like the stream setup, Keelan. Hello Rainbow, good to see you here bro. Um, Monte Carlo in a rear wheel drive is horrible with <laughs> winter tires, but we're gonna go soft. So this is gonna show you, it's gonna show me up, but let's see what we can do. Let's try and talk about it. A lot of the spin thing is road camber. Yeah, true, camber does affect them. Um, Thank you quite a lot. Hello, Pendle99. Thank you very much for the nice comment. Yes, we have went in with the Sierra now. Okay, so... <laughs> this is going to be so difficult because we've got the turbo boost as well. But well, you're going to have to be so tentative now with the throttle input. So the, we're on the changeable condition, we've got patches of ice, we've got uh, tarmac. So we're getting traction on the, the drive bits, it's pushing the car forward. You can hear the engine getting light, that's another sign that, you know, you need to come off the throttle. So we're not facing anything too bad, we just hit the ice, that's when you get a load of rotation. You need to come off the throttle again then. Got understeer at, at the moment. It's all fine. I don't have, you know, it's hard to get your confidence. These are tricky conditions. We had a bit of slip and then we got really good traction again coming onto the dry tarmac. It tried to pull the car in then to the wall. Understeer, and then we got the grip. So you need to read the road. You can see, look, you can see where the ice is. Um, so it should be no problem. Just try not to brake too hard on the ice. Try not to hit the throttle. So you can see it here. Look, the car starts to slide to the outside. Now this is where we need to start being careful. So we can feel the car lose complete traction on the front and rear. Here, we're just trying to judge the grip. Car is already moving around. It's gonna grab a bit of traction. And we're just being very tentative with the throttle. So let's see once we get up to the full winter conditions. And you wanna you know you can see this is where you wanna drive, this is where the traction is, is on the dry tarmac, so always aim for that, even if it's not the optimal um, racing line. Now we've got good grip here, we can go full throttle, carry a nice slide. Same again, we've got traction. Now this is where we're going to have no traction. We've got the soft tyres on. Look, the car is just trying to rotate. We have to count just here. Now we need to be attentive with throttle. Just keep pumping it, not too much. Now this is where we get into like a real rhythm, we're going to dance from corner to corner. We're not going too much with the throttle. Good thing about this car is you get a bit of turbo lag down low, so it kind of helps. Look, we got the boost then and that's why we over rotated. So you need, you need to be careful with that with the Sierra, is that down low in the rev range, you have the turbo lag, so you're not going to get as much wheel spin. And then, when the turbo kicks in, the wheels go blah and around the car goes, so yeah, you need to be careful of that. Q 
keeping it low in the rev range is actually the easiest way, but luck we completely died. We have to, we have to kick the clutch to build the revs up again. So there's always a happy medium with keeping the revs in the right area. Not too low, not too high. And then a weight transfer, we let the car come across again. We're having to counter steer a lot because the car just wants to spin out. Just touch the bank a little bit. But yeah, if you get loads of wheel spin, you want to select a higher gear as well. It's going to minimize the wheel spin. Look at that, look at that. Start to get too much wheel spin, we change up too much uh, revolutions on the engine. Now we're getting into rhythm. It's not fast, but it really does teach you all about um, rear wheel drive control and what you need to do with the throttle. We've just got soft tires on Monte Carlo, that's all we're doing. Rainbow, yes, I do change um, degrees of rotation. I've went up to 540 for tonight, and I usually use about 300-ish for R5, just because that's um, nice and responsive for that class. But with rear-wheel drive, you certainly want to bump up the um, degrees of rotation because it's going to give you a bigger window to play with. You guys need to give this a go. <laughs> what? That was me going slow. Should we see what happens when I try to go fast? <clears throat> That's what I was talking about. Look. This here is um, what I was talking about with... Uh, where can we see this from? That looks good. So, the car's understeering ever so slightly. Look, we've actually got a little bit of opposite lock. A little bit of opposite lock. And once we hit the dry tarmac, it pulls the car in. Look, it starts to go in, go in and actually touch the wall. Because I've had so much lock on trying to stop it from understeering. But when you make the transition between the surfaces, that's what you have to watch out for in Monte Carlo. Definitely give it a go, Simon. Right. Let's give this a bash. So 4.45 to beat. That was us explaining a bit. Let's see what we can do. Now we're actually trying to go for time and how we try to manage everything. So over these icy patches, we're just trying to... You see, it's quite difficult because you get so much grip with the soft tire. And up here, we've got ice patches on the braking. You need to be careful, and then search for the search for the dry tarmac. Now we've got a really patchy here. Let's watch here as well. We've got a patch here. We're going to know the car's going to wash out. We've got ice here, and then we're going to get grip now. Stick out here. Look, that's where the dry is. <coughs> dry patch we want to aim for those with these tires and we're maintaining third gear we're not changing gear at all we don't need to we're keeping control of the car by doing this over this crest the car is going to get light we want to come off the throttle the car understeers thankfully we had a tarmac patch to catch grip here we need to go off the throttle the car is just floating around. We don't need to do anything else. We just need to go a little bit with the throttle input. We're getting loads of wheel spin going up this hill. We'll keep the gear low and, or high, sorry, in fourth to minimize that. So we could see the ice patches there. We knew the car was going to snap. 
Now we're going to get on to the full ice, which is the tricky part. Got loads of grip here. Just go flat out on these bits. See him here. Now on to the snow. Car is just all over the place, but let's get it nice around here. We're getting loads of... There you see, we're getting... I didn't make a mincemeal of it, but we were washing out with understeer. We started pumping the throttle, we got the car to start rotating again. This is painfully slow, but that's what you have to do. That's the second time I had a half spin there. Ah, <laughs> I touched the inside. Touched the inside, messed it up. Misusing the brakes and how it sent me into the spin out, especially when I'm feathering the brakes to keep control of high speed. Glad you're liking the tutorial, Paul. So, Gilroy, you might have missed earlier on, but the way we minimized the rear wheel drive escort from snapping under braking was opening up the coast slash braking differential lock amount. Open that right up, it should help with that. This is with softs, yeah. So let's just give that another go. Let's see what we can do. And then we'll go with winters and see can we try and get a world record. So we actually just, look, we just aim for the dry tarmac. We were so much quicker around there by doing so. So we're learning how to analyze the road tonight as well. Look, the dry tarmac's on the inside. See him for that. Cars floating on the ice. We just wait till we find the grip again. We don't have to pressure, we don't have to force it. We just wait till we find the grip again when we, the car does start floating. On these changeable conditions. And on we go again. This corner's a tricky one, we want to go in early. We get a bit of grip on the dry after the crest, then we lost control. Too fast, that was too fast. Too fast in, um, then we had to brake harder on the ice and uh, the car rotated. So that's what happens if we don't get our entry speed correct. It's for sure a nervous machine, 100%. Let's go again. We have to complete this. This is how tricky it is though, once you're trying to push for a time. It's all very well just sitting back and saying, oh, this is how you go about it. But this is uh, trying to push for the time. That's where it's tricky. We're going to break on the tarmac. Coast over the ice. Car's just going all over the place there. From over here, we're going to lose traction. Off the throttle on the ice till we get the dry patch. Same here. Car starts to grip up again. And we're just judging the grip. Let's uh, be a little bit more careful now on the snow. Considering we don't have the correct tires, we catch the car. You need to have quick hands, catch the car. When it snaps the gap, coast over here, we get the traction now, we need to brake hard. Coast around here, this is no joke, this corner. You can see how little input I'm putting on the throttle. Brake hard on the tarmac. Let's coast it in. You notice I'm not touching the handbrake either. 
There's no need to touch the handbrake on this stage. The car will do a good enough job of losing traction for you. There's no requirement at all. So we need to brake more. And look, we got understeer when we brake, but we got the correct speed now. We're just drifting the whole way up this hill now. Very gentle with the throttle. We didn't spin there that this this time. This is a very tricky hairpin. Getting no traction. You see we're just being so patient. We even touch the bank and we're just sliding from corner to corner. The car starts to drift a little bit more, we come completely off the throttle. Now the revs bog down, we just quick clutch kick to build them up again. See, we're already 25 up on our demonstration run. All the way at the fifth. Look, we're getting the traction though. It doesn't seem fast, but stopping the car from scrambling for traction. So always select that higher gear. Tell you what, this replay is going to look like poetry in motion. <laughs> it's going to look so sick. Look how patient we are. We're just flowing though. We're we're in that flow and we're getting in the zone where we just let the car dance and we're just guiding it on its way. Ah, no, that was a. Uh, not so slick um, as we bog down the revs again, but yeah, these are tricky conditions. What you're trying to minimize is mistakes, and uh, you know, we're effectively on the wrong tire choice. Um, we're just trying to carry as much speed as we can, but that's a great way to learn car control. So, we've done a 4.19. See where that puts us. I do that on the championship, I drive the track a few times, but that's how I like to play. Single player, so I, I just want to... Yeah, I like jumping in with the, um, the car and just driving the track as well. I don't like practicing too much. I'm glad you can see my throttle input. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to load this. Okay, so 154, 33 seconds. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to beat that, but... What was that done in? Mark to Asgard? Hello, Conan. How do the pilots of those years fly such monsters? Uh, it's true. It's a, a trickier um, task driving a car like this, for sure. It, um, it's not simple, but you can definitely have a lot of fun doing it. Hello, Anto6P. Thanks for tuning in. Aw. Oh, we don't know what time it's to be. So let's see the difference now of going with winters. We're going to have a lot more um, oversteer on the tarmac. So, let's see how this goes. We're getting more wheel spin now. You can see, look, look at the ghost. It got all the traction, and I've got none. That's the difference. It's using a slick on the uh, dry patches. Look 
for sure the winters are the best choice for this stage. So we can get in a bit of a better rhythm on the tarmac though. In terms of flowing the car like we are at the top. I have the call with all the snow. I mean, it mints me to that corner. So when are we going to catch up with this ghost? That's the question. How much are we going to take out of it? So it goes off into the distance. Two seconds ahead. It's just going over the crest up there now. We still need to be careful though. We can't just drive around like we're Superman. We still have to respect the grip that we're getting. You can see we're already hunting down the ghost. Oh, oh, <laughs> so it just almost uh, hit the bank. I'll tell you Oh, no! <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. The ghost takes off um, when it gets traction. <laughs> Make sure to do your work, Sasquatch. You do a, a little bit of both. A little bit of watching, a little bit of work. Okay, so that was a better start for us. That's quite hard to readjust to the different tires. Um, as you can see, I'm making mistakes in places that I wasn't with the soft tires. Oh, like there. Damn. We just had to uh, c come out of the throttle to make that corner at all. So, our goal is to beat this ghost. Well, it's quite tricky, I must admit, on the tarmac bits with this car. Rarely does not want to go straight. I think it's actually trickier than driving on the snow with the soft tires, the slicks. So we still need to have a bit of respect around here. Don't take the Mickey too much. seconds down. How much are we going to make up now on the uh, dry part of the stage? Dry, I mean snowy. <laughs> what am I saying? It's a little bit harder to get into the rhythm, but as you can see, we've already hunted down the ghost quite a lot. And we're just being a little bit more impatient with the throttle. Past the ghost successfully. Shouldn't have touched the handbrake, I said. We didn't need to, so that was a messed up corner. We need to set the car up just with our driving, no handbrakes. Nah, we fucked it. So, not the best. We're only a tenth up. No, no! Uh, so I'm actually driving worse with winter tires on snow than I am with slick tires on snow. <sighs> An overlaid display as player inputs would be nice. You know these. Yeah, I've seen those. I haven't installed them yet though. Yeah, obviously the, the Opel Manta is a lot longer than the Escort. Long bonnet on it. 
the hand characteristics are a lot different. It's probably got a much longer wheelbase as well, Oshin. I have not done Monte Carlo in real life Sasquatch, but I would definitely like to give it a go. 100%. Someday we'll get there. We just need to figure out uh, how the whole sponsorship game works. We'll get there. We need to keep, keep trying, keep our hopes up. So, let's try and not fuck it up this time. I can't believe I drive better with this car. <laughs> with uh, the soft tires in Monte Carlo versus the winters. But hey. Shouldn't be that surprised. Strange things do happen. As always. Come on. I need to drive an RGT car here. See him really fighting with the car. Lost less time this though. This time. Um, we're not as far behind. Oh, hard on the brakes, we just get stopped. Much closer to the ghost now. Ugh. Complete handful. <laughs> it's actually got. I find it so tricky to drive. Give me back my soft tires. <laughs> ah! It's an understeer. Come on. Come on. Right, don't fuck it up now. I think it's just a psychological thing, isn't it? You're being way more impatient because you think that you've got the better tire now. You think you're gonna have the better grip, but you still have to be respectful for what the car is actually doing. Remember not to hit anything with the front. Three seconds up now. Just focusing on what the car is doing. Bank back there to have us go forward again. Oh, <laughs> we almost rolled over the line. Bombs are uh, coming out with Monty, that's for sure. It's a good question if the top times are with um, softs or with winters. I think they're probably with winters, to be honest. We just beat our time by quite a lot. So look, we're up to 40 seconds. What is the car of choice? Stratus? 
Uh, GTR technical. So, should we have a go with the Stratus, guys? Should we have a go with the Stratus, or what do you want to see now? Yeah, that'll be the wheelbase. The reason that the Manta had um, more grip with longer wheelbase, Oshin. Okay, Stratus it is. Should we go for? Da, 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 da. We'll go for the uh, Oliver Solberg's granddad Stratus. So the Sierra was on de default setup just now, yeah. So we're going winter again. Let's just go into it with the Stratus. See how much quicker this little package is over the Sierra. Just listen to that engine. We're doing this without Phil too, that has to be uh, worth a few seconds. <laughs> So what's really going to pay dividends with this compared to the Sierra is just how low it is to the ground. I already feel it's just getting traction way better too. It's going forward more than it is sideways. It almost feels a bit wrong. I'm doing a rally stage without pace notes. Feels a bit taboo. So we're already three seconds up on the Stratus. <laughs> Come on, you girl, yeah. And probably the turbo wasn't helping, to be honest. With the uh, Sierra, the, the turbo would have been causing us all sorts of problems whenever that boost came in. You could see you know, I was struggling just to keep it in a straight line. This is just a bit more effortless. This is a joy. Seven seconds up. All we done was change the car. You see a lot of drivers doing that in real life too, but uh, the car is not the reason they're slow. <laughs> but in this uh, case, it is. Just try and judge it up this hill now and slippy bits. Spin. Yeah, one of you guys could be my co-driver. So we're 10 seconds up. We're only 19 off the fastest time in the Sierra. Just almost clipped inside. Ah, oh, no! <laughs> I was reading the chat. Let's we'll keep going, let's keep going. Let's see if we can still beat the Sierra. We're gonna. <laughs> no! Come on! Let's beat the Sierra! Stay away, Sierra! You 
can't win this. Come on. Come on. We'll have another go, of course. I think, yeah, we can do a nice time with this. It's just a little bit tricky on the ice compared to the tarmac. The rear is just trying to spin. More steering lock. <laughs> oh, we still beat the Sierra. Yeah, it was a lot quicker, wasn't it? Look, let's go again. Come on. We may have to change the setup to get the record, though. You think she'd go better? She did go better. She went a lot better, didn't she? Is a good yoke. I'm falling in love with this little. Oh! Ah! <laughs> ah! Jump the start. It's not what you want to do in real life and game either. You don't want a 10 second penalty. I'm starting to fall in love with my little uh, strata ass. Come on, come on, come on. Very calm, with no uh, co-driver. <laughs> it's a bit eerie. Nice, we're getting good drive up the hill now. Ooh! Just putting the rear ass out towards the ditch. Never tease a ditch with your ass because it'll always take it. Stratus, keep going up the hill. That's what we want. Keep going straight. Yeah, I have jumped the start in real life. Sasquatch, I have, unfortunately. I think I've only ever done it once though. Learned my lesson. It's a minute penalty. Definitely not what you want.
No! We don't have that far to go, guys. Beyond... Four seconds, come on, we can do this. <laughs> Let's deal with the default setup, come on. We're on winters. We're on winters at the minute. Chris Chapman since getting my TX wheel. Barely had any vibration feedback to help drive in the rear wheel drive. Um, to be honest, I don't get too much vibration feedback either. But I turn everything up um, 100%, so you could try turning everything up in your uh, Thrustmaster profile up to 100% like I have. Um, I have a YouTube video, go check it out on my settings that I use. Give those a go, see if they help you out. Alright guys, let's get this world record done. I almost feel like we need to turn on Phil. I feel a bit dirty not having him on. Especially if we're going for a world record. Let's keep him down low though. <sighs> right, come on. We have a half spin, that's worth two seconds. We need to make up two seconds elsewhere. Slow three left long, tightens open air left. Into six right. Opens of a crest, slow, keep left of a 60 crest, into unseen heaven right. Bump on exit, for left long tightens. And keep right of a 50, crest, and for left tightens. 30, one right long. Oh, we'll just see how we do it the first split left again. Uh. 30. Let's keep going, come on. Just trying to carry as much speed as we can. <laughs> Plus zero sixty nine of ten. Again. No! Did say what did I tell you? Don't show your rear to a ditch because it will take it. We showed it the last time and what did it do? It took it the next time round. Ah, oh, come on. Not as fast, unfortunately. We can still make it up. Actually, better than the last time, though. Three left, extra long, tightens narrow. Fifty. Stay away from me, ditch.
Don't touch me, ditch. Snow and ice starts now. One hundred. Extra, extra long caution. I'll tell you what, guys, this is actually so much fun. Into three right long Titans. Into four left. Into two black Titans. Into slow, four left long. Into one right long. Opens. Into three left long. Sixty. Unseen. Open air and right. Into three left long. Into two right long. Six left of a crest. Come on. Fifty. Three left long. Turns two. Into three right long. Caution. Tightens two. Fifty. No! Opens extra long. Thirty. Ah. Oh. Guys. Ah. Oh. This is why it breaks your heart, Monte Carlo was rear wheel drive. Five, but four, if you're uh, two, a returning stream watcher, you know that we don't give up on this shit. Open left. We can do it. Into six right. Opens of a crest. Determination is what uh, helps you succeed at anything. Stratos. I saw in the Sierra as the ghost. Fifty. Two left. Opens extra long. Thirty. Two right tightens. Thirty over crest. Two right. Into six left. Into four right. 
Guys, sorry about this, but we can keep going. We can keep going. It's just you get caught out by one corner, the, start, the car starts to overtake. And that's what's tricky about rear wheel drive, it'll just bite you in the ass at any chance. Make you look like a little boy. Quicker every pass. Three left, extra long, tightens narrow. Oh! Ho -ho! That was a bit of a four shit left your left pants long. moment. Slow fifty, four left long of a crest, into open air. Ah! Fuck it. I can't do it, I need to just regain a little bit of composure now. Slow three left long, tightens, open air left. Into six right, opens of a crest, slow, keep left of a sixty. I need to uh, have a little bit more finesse that I was talking about. Up on exit, into four left long, tightens, and keep right of a fifty, crest, and four left tightens. 30, one right long, into two left long, 30, two right long, open six long of a crest, into one left tightens, into three right, and three left long, into three right, 30, three left long tightens, 100, Right to the crest, 50, 3 left, extra long, tightens narrow, 50, Good as our previous through there, but come on. Into three right long tightens, into four left, into two right tightens. Into slow, four left long, into one right long. Opens. Into three left long. Look how much I'm concentrating. Sixty. Unseen. Open head and right. Into three left long. Into two right long. Into six left of a crest. Fifty. Three left long. Tightens two. Into three right long, caution, tightens two, fifty, 
two left, opens extra long. 30. Two right tightens. 30 over crest. Two right. Into six left. Into four right. 30. Three left long, tightens one. Opens. Four left long. Into two right long. Into five left. Into three right long. Tightens two. Into four left. 80. Crest and turn five right. Over finish 30. Two left to stop. Ah, it's not enough, guys. Oh. <sighs> I think I would be a bit quicker with the VR. How far are we behind? 1.1. So, let's change the setup. And go for it. Let's take us down. Gearing wise, we'll keep it the same. Brakes. Let's try putting a bit of two in. One second. I think we can do it. Let's lower the car down too. A little bit lower. Bring rates. Anti-roll bar is pretty soft, so that's probably what's getting us good traction. Alright, come on. Five, four, three, Second place three, won't do. One, two. Slow three left long, tightens up and down left. Into six right. Opens of a crest, slow, keep left of a 60 crest, into unseen heavy right. Thought we were gonna do it with the default setup, but. But on exit. Probably not. Into four left long, tightens. And keep right of a 50 crest, and four left tightens. 30, one right long. Into two left long. 30, two right long. Six long of a crest. Into one left tightens. Into three right. And three left long. Into three right. Thirty. Three left long tightens. One hundred. Four right of a crest. Fifty. Three left extra long. Tightens narrow. Fifty. There for sure. <laughs> Too deep. Two left long tightens. Into three right long. Snow and ice starts now. One hundred. Ah. Extra long. So we can do it. There's no doubt in that. Try and bring spring rate of the rear up and this slightly just to see see what happens with the balance of the car. Five, it's definitely going to be a tough ask, three, but I think we can do it. Exit into four left long at Titans and keep right over fifty crest and four left Titans. 
13, one right long. Into two left long. 30, two right long. Open six long on the crest. Into one left tightens. Into three right. And three left long. Into three right. It's too slow, you know, isn't it? 30, three left long tightens. Yeah. So that was the wrong move, you need to soften the rear then, get the traction that way. Let's try that. So we just figured out that we're slower with the stiffer rear, which makes sense. You want softer to get the traction um, with the Raven Drive car, especially if it's hanging out too much. Opens of a crest, slow, keep left of a 60 crest, into unseen head and right. Bump on exit, into four left long, that tightens. And keep right of a 50 crest, and four left tightens. 30, one right long. Into two left long. 30, two right long. Open six long with a crest. Into one left tightens. Into three right. And three left long. Into three right. Thirty. Three left long tightens. One hundred. Four right to a crest. Fifty. Three left extra long. Tightens narrow. Fifty. How did I get so much time? Fuck, we got so much time in the last sector. We did it, didn't we? It was a 46 he done.
This is not a good time for it to load slowly. But pretty confident we've done it. Oh. <laughs> Go on. Get in there, boys. That's what uh, dedication does. Fucking hell. Where do we get all the time in the last sector? Unbelievable. Let's watch the whole thing. I'm pretty sure there's a go back to start button, but anyway. I don't know where it is. There we go. Oh. So we were just getting more traction on the snow, I think. Um, we softened the springs on the rear. We softened anti-roll bar, so we're getting loads of traction. We're getting good traction going up that um, ascent on the ice. Thank you, bros. Glad your wheels feeling better now, Chris. Thank you very much, guys, for uh, sticking with me while we tried to get this world world record. We didn't have to change the setup too much, but it's knowing what you need to do. Because I went stiffer with the the rear, and we immediately knew that was not better. Um, so then we went a lot softer, which seemed to do the trick. <laughs> I almost, almost spun it there. I was on the limit coming in there too. Second place in the Sierra might be a bit of an ask, I think. So this is where we made, we made so much time on the last sector, we even made a mistake too, and we still crashed it. We made a half spin towards the end. But look, um, we're just flowing up the hill, carrying lots of momentum, that's what you need to do. It's one big drift the whole way up. Who said uh, rally drivers can't be drifters? Look at it. Look at it. Don't you love to see it? It's so slow. It's so slow, but you have to be patient. Yeah, I, I can't believe how much we made on the last sector, Sasquatch. It was crazy. No idea where we got it from. Alright, really good speed around there, though, to be honest. Look at this. Using every inch. Hello Robbie, I hope you're good, hope you're keeping well. And uh, this is the little half spin coming up now guys. Just here in the end of this corner isn't it? There, yeah, we clipped the inside. And it, ru it ruined my momentum around this corner too because I had to stay out wide to stop the car from spinning. And we just clipped the inside. Doesn't look like much, but it's probably half a tenth. Because then I'm not carrying as much momentum up this hill either. That's how it's done.
You need to keep prying, Kildro. That doesn't want to load. So we mastered rear wheel drive in one of the trickiest conditions, guys. We've uh, managed to get a world record against GTR Technical, who is a world record pro. Let's let's not uh, beat around the bush. He does not mess around. So to finish off, let's take a little look and see what's happening in the dailies. I think we'll finish it off there. Have we got any rear wheel drive cars? Group E rear wheel drive. We'll go with that. That's going to be fun. Alright, what are we going for? I'm going to go this because I know I can drive it in Scotland. Although we don't have the engine upgrade, obviously. Let's uh, buy tuning for it though. Sorry, whenever I use the... Uh, I have a 4G router. It's really good upload speed, but it seems to connect with the server so slowly. Uh, do I have many more records on the game? I think I have maybe three or four now. Yeah, both uh, the front wheel drive and rear wheel drive streams ended with the world record, so we're going to have to keep that up now, aren't we? <laughs> Four wheel drive is going to have to be a world record too. No problem, Sasquatch. Glad you're enjoying it, bro. Um, you've been a good supporter of the channel, so thank you very much. So we got wet conditions. We're going to tune this baby we don't want to spare so i think oh shit i'm in the cheek let's see what we're dealing with though let's see what we're dealing with <clears throat> i wonder is it the full stage that uh, log on the inside. You got out. I'm going to turn Phil up as well. He's a little bit too quiet. Turn him up. Full whack. Let's get him right in our ears. And keep right into three left. Very long at Titans. And four right. Very long. Titans ditch outside. Into four left. 40. Slowing three right, the turn square right, don't cut. Into six left long. Yeah, so RAC, we need to open up the rear differential. Let's open that right up. And we will. Uh, it's such a brutal car, yeah, it is. Uh, I don't know about all the world records, but we can get some of them. Yeah, see how you get on, bro, with the Sierra in New Zealand. Hopefully you learnt some tricks. Let's try just making the rear softer again. And get that traction. Is this the full stage? Oh god, it is the full stage too. Sentence preferences. I'm on early. Five, I might just drive in Bonneview so you can three, we do two, this. One, go. Six left opens extra long. Caution slow in turn. One right uphill. Opens four right. Very long. Titans three. Extra long. Keep in. Titans of a small crest into three left. Titans and keep right. Into three left, very long, tightens, and four right, very long, tightens, ditch outside, into four left, 40, slowing three right, but turn square right, don't cut.
to six left long. 130. Uh, I'm used to sliding about in Monte Carlo now, not used to all this grip. Five left of the bumps. 70. Four right long. Opens of a crest past junction. And Titans keep in. 50. Short by left. Opens 60. Over double crest. And six left long of a dip. Slow at 45. Left Titans 3. 100. Deceptive. Four left long of a crest. Titans to stop. Oh, I'm not enjoying this as much. Join us as much. Tricky. Brakes are quite far to the rear. Let's try taking this down a bit too. Oh, that's quite high. We're gonna open that up. Get the rest to see him. Oh nice, what type of uh, WRX is this? Uh, opens extra old shape one or one of the new ones? One right uphill. Opens four right, very long, tightens three, extra long, keep in, tightens of a small crest, into three left. Ah, that's tightens, nice now. Keep right, into three left, very nice long, tightens, setup. and four right, very long, tightens, ditch outside, into four left, 40, slowing three right, oh, around the way there though. Square right, don't cut. Into six left long, 130. Five left of a bumps, 70. Four right long, opens of a crest past junction, and Titans keep in 50. Short five left, opens 60. Over double crest, oh. and six Got left her. long of a dip, slowing 45. Left Titans three, 100. Deceptive, four left long of a crest, Titans to stop. Well done. We'll just give it a go now, guys. See if we can have a good run. We got nothing to lose. Ah, uh, 2017 is a really nice car. Whenever you're in the bonnet view, is it in the center? It should be. Alright, let's give it a crack. Let's give it a go. Starts Seven tens of quick time. Extra long. Good luck. Aim for top ten two, anyway. One go. Six left opens extra long. Caution slow in turn. One right uphill. Opens four right. Very long. Tightens three. Extra long. Keep in. Tightens of a small crest into three left. Tightens and keep right into three left. Very long. Tightens and four right. Very long. Tightens ditch outside into four left. Forty slowing three right. Square right, don't cut. Into six left long, 130. Five left of a bumps, 70. Four right long, opens of a crest pass junction, and Titans keep in 50. Short five left, open 60. Of a double crest, and six left long of a dip, slow in 45. Left Titans three. 100. Deceptive. Four left long of a crest. Titans. 50. Five right Titans. Into five left. Caution. Titans. Narrow short. Three right. And six left. Very long. Titans. Three long. 40. One right long. Don't cut. Drops inside. 30. Four left of a crest. 50. Short. Two right of a crest. Drop outside. 60. Keep left of a small crest. Into three left of a dip. 90. 
three left long, don't cut rocks inside, 80, over bumpy crests, short six left, into six right tightens four of a crest, very long, 50, short four left past junction, keep out of a jump, into six right, into late five left of a crest, don't cut, then keep out of a jump, 70, slow in four right of a crest, tighten sudden, three left, don't cut, very long rocks inside, 40, deceptive three right tightens of a small crest, into three left, into four right and four left past junction, slow three right, very long tighten stitch out, then slow in four right into turn sudden square left. 50. Open head in right, don't cut rocks inside. Into four left tightens. And six right. So it's going okay right so far, guys. Very long. The caution to right. And three left tightens two. Two right, very long, don't cut rocks inside. And three left of a crest. 60 downhill. Three left long. Into six right, extra long. Caution tightens three. Oh, I was lucky. Left long, opens and tightens. Into four right, to keep right of a junction. Into three left, into slowing caution. Five right long, tightens turn one. Extra long. And three left long, tightens. Opens of a small crest. Sixty. Two right, opens long. Two left long, opens, six left, and long crest, and sudden four left. Come on, right. we lost a bit there. Slow in 80, four left long, 40, turn early, one left tightens. 90, keep middle of a crest. And stay middle of a 60, to keep middle of a jump, 60, left tightens, three, extra long, 70. Small crest into three right tightens. 70. Early four right of a crest. 110 downhill. Slow in three right long. Tightens past junction. Don't cut. And five left long. Tightens keep in of a crest. Into short five right. Stay middle over 190. Slow in six left of logs. Into six right. 40 caution. Three left tightens keep in. Into short six right. And four left. And six right. 60. Three left, keep in long. Oh. 40, three right long, opens to keep right over 80. Six left over bumps, into flat right, 70. Got something. Jump. No, get out of there. Caution. Fuck. Four left, slow in Come 60. On, Two right, tight one, very long, tight stop cut, and keep middle of a small crest, fast three left. 50, three right long, tight skid in. Into four left long and four right opens tightness past junction. 40. Caution deceptive. Three right tightens up against one left. Very long. Keep in. And into five right. 70. Sorry, it's right very right sideways now. 100. Lost a bit in that sector. Extra, extra long of a crest. 130. Keep middle of a jump. The flat right of a bump. 80 pass lay by. Left 60, four right 50, six left that mod. 50, keep middle of a big bump jump oh. 60, caution six right long tightens short two, into two left, extra long, opens and tightens, and six right opens 50. Nah, you. Three right tightens keep in. The rear's gone all together. 90, deceptive, four right tightens of a crest, caution, six left very long tightens, heavy left, extra long tightens, and four right long. 50, caution shot, three left of a crest into unseen heavy right, extra long, opens to keep middle of a small crest, into three left, opens 140, keep right of a jump and slow in six left long, don't cut, into five right tightens four of a crest, 40, flat right, into five left of a crest, opens and tightens three left long of a crest, and flat right of a bump and dip, Caution 70, turn, three left tightens, don't cut, four right, 40, five right, extra long, 80, six right, into four left, don't cut, tightens long, 100, six right, very long tightens, to keep middle of the 120, 
Six left, potent of a crest into six right long, 50. Flat right of a small crest, 70. Four right of a crest, opens long oh. to keep middle of a crest and flat Moving left, by. 50 past logs. Small crest, to the flat left, 160. Caution, jump into short, three left, don't cut, 50. Four left tightens, 60. Six left of a crest, very long, caution, tightens into two right. One left long, don't cut, opens three, very long, tightens at end and keep right into four left, opens to keep middle of a long press. 70, six right of a dip, opens keep middle of a jump, 80, flat right into six left, extra long, opens 150, keep middle of a jump, 60, six left, opens 60, Keep middle of a crest into short six left. Caution slow in 100 downhill. Small crest and two right tightens and turn square right. Don't cut. Into six left. Opens and tightens five left with a finish. Extra long. Tightens three. 50. Come on. Oh, God, that was difficult. Ugh. Oh, God, that was a beast of a thing to hold on to. At high speed, oh, especially when you don't have as much uh, precision in the wheel with the higher degrees of rotation. Oh. I mean, that was not perfect, but you know, we lost a lot after the first bit. It looks like the 037 is the car to have as well, um, but we made the BMW. M1 Pro car work. That was hard work. Oh. <sighs> Fucking. Ah. <laughs> uh. It looks like that might be the winning time too. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks, Eduardo. Oh, it seems to work really nice on the fast stuff. But I was fighting with the car so much, like this on the straights. It was like that the whole way, not knowing I was going to keep hold of it. Thanks, Alfax. Thank you. Casper. Thanks, Gareth. Let's go for roadside only. <laughs> Matija, that's, uh, that's funny. <laughs> that was not perfect though, guys, but I just gave it my all. I was struggling so much at times. Oh. Thanks, Sasquatch. Cheers, bro. So, we just done a world record with rear wheel drive and hopefully won a daily challenge with rear wheel drive. That was so tricky. Clip something there, we're lucky to get away with that. There's so many hot moments in this run. <laughs> so many moments, I thought it was over. Car's really moving around quite a lot. Once we got a little bit of tire wear, it started moving around like crazy. Big drift around there. We started losing time on those two sectors. Now we're uh, just, we didn't lose too much on all these next ones, but we're still slower, but it was only tenths of seconds.
<laughs> Sand. Here, we clip her log now. Oh! How lucky is that? Oh my days! How do I look back? Where's my look back button? That's it. I don't think I have one. Anyway. How lucky is this? Literally run over a log. How do you get away with this thing? These sort of things? Look, here we go flying in the air a bit. Oh, we just keep it pinned. <laughs> I was so lucky. We'd straight line the next corner then. <laughs> we could have quite easily launched into that tree. That was lucky. We need a bit of luck. And then we... Look at this, we uh... We go wide here, we're in the ditch. In the ditch, in the ditch, in the ditch. In the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Completely fell in the road sideways. Can I try to beat this time with the Lancia? I'm sure I'll beat it quite easily. With wet conditions, there's no guarantee this is without surface dig as well. Could be a lot of factors to play into this that would make me slower. I guess the best way would be to do a direct comparison with this and the Lancia on time trial. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this was a wing and a prayer stage. And we had a half spin here. So there's 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 at least six seconds of not more left than that. get a green split now again which give us a bit of hope. I think we got two in a row didn't we? And then the last split was red. I don't know what the track deck conditions are for this though. Plus we made so many mistakes. Well I think we could definitely do a direct comparison someday. <laughs> it's all over the place. jump. Almost another half spin. Uh, what stage then? So I'd probably always take soft. Um, I'd take mediums if you had like three long stages. That's when I would take mediums. But if it's uh, one long one, you could probably get away with softs. Done a really nice last corner too. So if we go, um, if we go and check the conditions, we can have a go on the Lancia.
Where's the overview? How do I get to that? I don't think I can anymore. Um, I don't think I can. Yeah. How do you go leaderboard? Your boy John's at the top. Two two one's a good driver as well. That was decent. <sighs> Alright, dudes, I think we will leave the stream there. It's been a, a roller coaster ride. It's been um It's been a tricky, tricky uh <laughs> evening trying to get those world records. But I hope you guys learned something. Um, that's the whole reason behind doing these uh, tutorial videos. Hope you guys learned something from the way I talked about what you need to look out for in rear wheel drive cars, certain techniques that will make you faster. Um, also, how I attempt to drive fast with the car as well, like in Monte Carlo, how we got the world record. Um, and yeah, and then doing the daily challenge, which was hectic. Um, so yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, as usual, for tuning in. It's been a really good stream. Um, they haven't been as popular recently. Uh, I think that's just down to people getting on with their lives a little bit more. Um, now that things are going back to some sort of normality. So yeah, we'll just keep going. We'll keep growing together as a community i really enjoy having you guys um coming in um talking with me watching me streaming it's a lot of fun and uh we'll we'll keep it do we'll keep doing it and keep growing so yeah until next time thanks for tuning in guys uh i think i'll do another stream tomorrow i think this time it may be euro truck simulator um but we'll see anyway guys ciao have a good one see you later